Hello and welcome Grimdon community and YouTube. Today I'm gonna show you my latest build. This is a Vitality Apostate using a fully converted Rune of Hagrid, the Starfish, as well as some debuff abilities and filler abilities such as Flames of Ignafar, Void of Pain, Ill Omen and Stormbox, and for defenses I'm using Inquisitor's Seal, also the debuff from Ill Omen, as well as Brother for Newell and Mark of Torment. So far the build has been able to clear all the main quest line content, like all the acts, Kova, Kamen, etc, no problem. Then also all the bosses from the roguelike dungeon, such as Overlord from Eldritch, Gargaball, and he was actually able to kill Gargaball's second phase before he was even able to spawn volcanoes. Morgneth. As well as Shadow Ram 36. 51. And 66. You can of course find the full videos of these runs down in the description below. Now I have made two different versions of this, number one with the Harbinger of Souls exclusive and number two with the Aura of Conviction exclusive. Harbinger of Souls exclusive gives you more damage basically, whereas Aura of Conviction makes you tank here with more physical resistance. Also the Aura of Conviction version is using different pounds, other than that both versions are basically identical. And then also the bot was able to kill some of the super bosses such as Lokar, Bourbon clones. Mogjogan. And Ravager. Alright, so let us talk about skill point allocation here. We are an Inquisitor and a Necromancer, making us the Apostate. So here I'm gonna show you the Aura of Conviction version, and you can check out both versions down below. There are gonna be the Grim Tools links for both of them, as usual. So on this one, we have Rune of Hagrad max to 26 out of 16, Biting Code to 18 out of 12, and Chill Surge to 20 out of 12. This is my main damage burst ability, and this should be maxed as high as possible. The filler ability Flames of Ingafar, also maxed out here actually. Then we have a one pointer here, one pointer here. Here, one pointer here. This is not supposed to be a main damage ability, this is just supposed to be a good filler ability in between casts of Home of Agarad, and also due to the lifesteal that we get on this through the weapons that we're gonna talk about here in a second, and also through the main hand damage, this is also supposed to help out with sustain. And we have Word of Pain as a one pointer, one pointer, one pointer, basically again because of the weapons, which also gives you like a total of 30% vitality resistance reduction to Word of Pain. Then we have Word of Renewal, max for DA and healing, as well as movement speed and less damage from Chthonix and Elvich. We have 7 out of 10 Vigor because I kinda already have enough HP as you can see. And this is also helpful for Freeze, Entrapment and Petrify reduction. If you have less HP or you're like struggling with these CCs, then you should put more points here. Still resolve at 10 points for the 12% racial damage to Chthonix and Eldritch, as well as 30% Aether and Chaos Rest. And we have Stormbox as a 1 pointer here and 1 pointer here. This is also fully converted to Vitality damage and also is a, like a nice additional debuff and also it's really really great to prop devotions such as for example Twin Fangs. Deadly Aim at 9 out of 12 here, this is actually just a 1 pointer after the last nerf to Deadly Aim, I think Deadly Aim is not a must have at soft cap anymore, like you can put the still to soft cap, it's still pretty good, or you can also like put some points over the soft cap now if you have the points for that, but other than that, it's also fine to actually just one point deadly aim now, at least when you have like lots of bonuses to it already, like I have here. Inquisitor Seal, awesome ability, especially for stationary builds like this when you're using Ignafar and Rune, so obviously you want to max this out. And then just a one pointer into Arcane Empowerment for like some additional crit damage to all damage. Artifact Handling, well obviously the Rune is our main damage ability, so you also want to max this one out to the highest number possible. Exclusive Aura of Conviction, again here you just want to max this out to get OA as well as physical resistance. The Necromancer side looks kinda empty for a Vitality build, right? Well on the Harbinger of Souls version you at least have this one as well, but here in this version you just use the raw stats from the Bastery Bar, put Mark of Torment to 6 out of 10 for the value, put Ill Omen to at least 10 out of 10, I put it here to 14 out of 10, this gives me a 27% damage reduction instead of 25, and also 5.4 seconds duration instead of 5.0. This does help with like the small downtime that you have between casts, so you have like an additional 0.6 seconds here where you can recast this and yeah I mean casting does cost like a half a second usually so if you have the duration over capped a little bit here compared to the normal soft cap then you have like a bigger window to recast this right. Also spectral binding this is like for HP and OA right you just want to max this out especially for the OA and then you have spectral wrath you want to max this out for the vitality resistance reduction. Now when it comes to the devotions we're using the two basically mandatory tier 3 devotions for vitality right mark of for a or will of for 
Toche rather, or the VitRR, as well as these notes are pretty good, and also Dying God for the additional wit damage, total speed, and crit damage. Also, these notes give you like insane OA and DA still, so yeah, Dying God is still a pretty good devotion, especially when you're playing Vitality or Chaos. For additional Vitality damage and healing, I'm also using Windigo's Mark, this also has 4% Fizz Rest, and also the Bat, which is a really good tier 1 devotion for like some additional Vitality damage, some additional lifesteal, as well as a proc that also helps with additional sustain. For the resistance reduction and also energy as well as HP heal devotion, we're using tip the scales. This is also really great for like yeah, additional energy, additional love steal, and 25 flat RR. The remaining devotions are basically filler devotions. We have some good ones such as Jackal or like Eel, uh Slotus gives you also like some HP. Energy regen and physical resistance. Sailor's Guide as well. Physical resistance over here, Lion, physical resistance here. Candle is pretty underwhelming now. It's actually really, really bad, so to say now. But it's still like the only devotion that gives you like four greens for three points. So in this case, it is a must have because otherwise these devotions would not be possible. And then you could choose between Gallows or Lizard and a blue point or Hound at a blue point. And in this specific case, I think actually that the Gallows, which is usually like a kind of underwhelming devotion, is actually pretty good. Or at least better than. Desert and Hound. Now here in Gruntools.com I also want to show you how to make these devotions yourself. And for that we're gonna reset the page here. So you always, always, always on Vitality Belt want to start out with Bat. Bat is just way too good. And depending on like what you're leveling with, I don't know, Ravenous Earth or Illumin or Word of Pain, you can put that on like any of those. For Endgame I'm using it on those Stormbooks. Now after the Bat I actually suggest you to go for Scales into Ratosh and then take when you go into Dying God after that. So for scales, you kinda need to go for something like train first. This one will give you lots of yellows. Then also you should get the lotus for yellows and greens. And now you have 8 yellows, which means you can get the scales. Once you have the scales, you can also switch crane for lion, or you just wait a bit and do that later. Depending on like whether or not you need crane's resistances while leveling. Now for a toast, you just need some more greens and some reds. For the red devotions, you wanna use the jackal as well as the red node here, and for the greens you want to take out this node and instead take the candle or scholar's light. And now you got the Ratosh devotion, and now you got the juicy resistance reduction which you can put either onto Word of Pain or Illumin. Next you want to aim for the Wendigo, and for that I suggest you to get some blues. Now for blues you definitely want to get the eel and satyr's guide. You can also like stop after the eel and just get the Wendigo first, and put this to the other one that you didn't use yet, either Word of Pain or Illumin. And now for Dying God you just need more blues, so for that you should get the Sailor's Guide and also now take the Lion and take out the Crane and also take out the Blue Point here and then also take Gallows into Dying God and put this to whatever is left, say for example Ignafire Hunt. And there you go, that's how you get to these devotions. Alright, so let's talk about the gear. Here it's gonna become a little bit more spicy. So we have dual decree of my mouth, right? So dual decree means we have, with good rolls, we would already have like 100% elemental to vitality conversion, right? I have pretty meh rolls, as you can see, this is only like 83% elemental to vitality conversion. But I have the red against mask to also help me out with that elemental to vitality conversion. So these three items together give me 100% elemental to vitality conversion, guaranteed doesn't matter which kind of roles you have. Additionally, this one does give me Vitality Damage to Ignafar and Love to Ignafar and also Vit RR to Word of Pain. And also some additional Elemental to Vit conversion to Word of Pain, which doesn't matter, but it's there. So yeah, two of these give me 30% Vit RR to Word of Pain, as well as 12% Love Steal and like 3.4, 3.5k additional Vit Damage to Flames of Ignafar. Dual wielding these also means that I'll have to spend my metal slot to use either a Direwolf Crest or a Kovax Brand. In this case, I went with Direwolf Crest for the OA as well as Aetherus. And also plus 2 to Deadly Aim is not bad either. Red Against Mask on top of this one giving me like Elemental to Vitality Conversion is also really really great for a poste. As you can see, there's basically plus 1 all skills. And in this case, this even beats Ravager Helm because of, well, number 1 the conversion. And number 2, you also get additional damage reduction to Mark of Torment, like damage absorption. And also another 1 second reduced cooldown on Mark of Torment. The Aura of Sanger bonuses are, in my opinion, useless here, so don't get debated here. Right against Shroud, the chest, I mean, we're already using one right against Peace, so why not use the other one as well? This one gives me, like, additional Chaos and Bleeding Rest on top of all of the stats that this one gives me already. But yeah, if you have a better idea for a chest piece, you can also use a different chest piece here if you want to. Now, the other core item of this build that also converts the Pierce Damage to Vitality to Rune of Hagorad is the Conduit of Runic Whispers. You need to roll the Pierce to Vit conversion on this one, and ideally you will probably want to get something like Poison Resistance, because Poison Resistance is kinda tight. I didn't get 
have that one here, but at least I got the stun resistance. I also crafted this one as well as the helmet for stun resistance, as you can see. Also, this conduit is responsible for the cool effect change on the Rune of Hagrid. So without this, this build is obviously unplayable, because otherwise Rune of Hagrid would not look like a selfish. So for rings, I'm using one prime ring of Morgoth for plus two to chill surge, that's really important, and also for offensive vitality as well as global pierce to vitality conversion. Global pierce to vitality conversion, while not needed for Rune of Hagrid anymore, is still useful for bat, and because of this, you heal like a little bit more from bat. Also, you get this invocation of Yugol, active, that spawns like those tentacles that also reduce enemy damage joint. For the second ring, you can use lots of different rings, actually. You could even use the Black Ice Ring, I believe, because that one could free up the pants slot. In this case, though, I went for Mythical Singer of the Fallen because of the just 15% RR, like 15% with RR on this one is really great. For the gloves, I'm using Vulgar's Touch because there wasn't really anything else that I think fit here pretty well. So, yeah, just a generic Vulgar's Vitality pair of gloves here, which does give me like plus two sexual wrath, which gives me basically more RR. As well as the Life Drinker proc, which gives me even more lifesteal. I also like some Chaos Civit conversion, which I think doesn't matter actually. The good thing about these is that they do give you also lots of OA and also lots of HP. For the belt, I'm using Mythical Core of Deception. This one gives you insane amounts of DA as well as Vit and Elemental Resistances. And it's also really good because it has plus one Inquisitor as well as plus two to Spectral Binding. So again, really nice for a Apostate. For the pants, I'm using Mythical Death Whisper Leggings. These are here for the physical resistance as well as Aether and Chaos Rest, and also because they give me plus 2 to Rune of Hagrid, which is pretty good as well. Also, the proc that procs whenever you get hit does have Pierce and Frostburn damage, and the Frostburn damage will be converted totally to Vitality DK, and the Pierce damage will be converted partially via the Ring Rat. For the Relic, I'm using Serenity. Honestly, not that much because of the proc, but also because of the proc, obviously. Serenity does give you a plus one all skills. Really great for a build like this that is kind of short on skill points, and also that has no dedicated set to it. And also, what is actually sometimes even better is like the percent Aether and Chaos resistance on a Relic. Like, relics don't give you, like, this good of, like, resistance value that often, and Serenity does that. Additionally, Apostate does not have any Circle Breaker whatsoever by default, right, as a class, so the Circle Breaker of Serenity does help a lot, actually. I mean, the second Circle Breaker that I'm using, actually, is Prismatic Diamond. This one is also pretty good, obviously, but it's nowhere close to, like, the Serenity proc, obviously. Now for boots and shoulders, you basically need to just use the base of this, right? You just need any Muzlak shoulder guard or like any stone plate greaves, whichever fits the resistances, right? You can see in this case that I'm using clerics prefix, for example, like clerics of blight is like I think even a double rare that does obviously boost my damage as well as my defenses. And I know these are kind of hard to get, but obviously the build does not need these. You can just use whatever you have that kind of fits the resistances and that should be fine as well. Same thing for the shoulder seater. This these are demonic of attack, rare prefix, magic suffix, but of attack, which gives me lots of away, obviously. That said, again, this build is still possible without these, or like just Musaki shoulder guards as a base. Any Musaki shoulder guards could work here. These are just especially important because of the plus three to Rune of Hagrid. But I mean, farming any Musaki shoulder guard should be pretty easy, actually. I mean, Musaki is not like a hard boss to kill. There's also gonna be a Grimtoes link down below in the description with no affixes on these boots, as you can see here. This will still have good resistances for everything, like a little bit less away, less poison over cap, less pierce over cap, but the biggest problem will be 0% stun rest, so when you are crafting this one or farming this one, you definitely want to get something with stun resistance. Also, if you don't have any of these whatsoever, just use any pair of boots that has reduced stun duration, such as Vice Corn Greaves, Dreadwalker Footpaths, Greaves of Illumens, Wraith Stalkers, Storm Titan Treads, Boots of Primordial Rage, or even Worm Scale Foot Guards. Out of all of those boots, Greaves of Illumens would probably be the best ones, because it would also give you plus 2 points to Ill Omen and plus 3 for Death Sentence. Now, when it comes to components, I think most of these are pretty self-explanatory. I'm using Dual Seal of Might, because of, well, Physical, Pierce, Vitality, and Bleed Rest. That's really, really amazing. You don't need any filler here, Ignifer has already your filler. Then you have dual bloodied crystals on the rings for like armor and bleed rest on DA, a seal of annihilation on your amulet, a tainted heart on your metal, dual Agneborg leathers on belt as well as boots, restless remains on the gloves. Ancient armor plates here on the pants. You could also use scaled hide, obviously, if you want higher percent armor absorption, but have like a lower overall armor value as well as less physique. And in this case, since this build already has kind of garbage armor, I don't really think that like 100% armor absorption is that important. And also, this one gives you like overall almost the same effective armor. I know it's like a little bit less than scaled hide, but this one does give you physique on top. And more physique on top means more defensive ability as well as like a little bit more HP, right? 
and also for the helmet, I already talked about it, right? Prismatic Diamond for the Circuit Breaker Flat Absorption proc. Also for the Rune Augment, I'm just using the Rune of Displacement. That's like pretty much the default choice for any caster, right? Instant cast, lowest cooldown out of all these, teleports, very very solid for all kinds of defensive purposes. So let me show this guy to you a bit in action here. And first of all, let's start out with a dummy kill time here. Let's start at 30 seconds here and see how fast we can kill it. So the kill time is around 35 seconds as you could see, which is not super amazing, but the build is pretty tanky and can still kill like lots of bosses that other builds cannot. So for a change let's do some Bastion of Chaos here first, and also remember that this Necropolis interior always has a spawn location for a totem. And then after that we're also gonna check out the Tomb of Morganath as well as Lokar. Open the gates. Alright, we got the log of up coming up as well as a totem. This should be pretty interesting, maybe. The DR can die? I didn't even see him. I think he just exploded. Not sure there. Alright, I guess everybody's dead. A soldiers of Wolverine? I mean, that's nothing special, right? Alright, so on to Charlul. Wait, is that a word eater? Wait, is that really it? Wait, does it exist? What? Nani? Really? Of course not. Now I gotta say that overall this character is not the fastest dungeon runner, I mean there's not a dual wield nightblade for example, right? But if you compare it to other like stationary builds such as like Aether Ray builds or Ignafar or Drain Essence builds, I think this one is still decent, like this one has still like a similar kill speed for dungeons or a clearing speed for dungeons than say other stationary builds such as, well yeah, Aether Ray builds for example. And uh, when it comes to like killing bosses, like super bosses for example, this is just as good if not even better actually. Be gone! Uh, let's see how we fare against the Magi's. We got Anubar and Bust in here. I'm in pretty smooth, right? If you get hit by the blue aura, like the RR reduction, I mean the resistance reduction, 
They have them. You can also just use like Mark of Torment to be safe, right? Alright, let's see if we can pass the tank in this test here. Just stand in the middle and tank everything at once, right? Let's see if we can survive this. Rather, I mean, we're gonna survive this either way, but can we survive this without like proccing Serenity, for example? Then it's gonna be the question, right? So we're gonna be careful of arcanes, obviously. It's not gonna be where Monka is in here. But I mean, so far so good, right? Actually, kind of easy if you ask me. And yeah, since you also need to get a conduit for this character, don't forget to check this shop out for purple mats and conduit recipes. Alright, Morganath, here we go. You got another Zephyrus guy in here, but I mean, they just are getting killed by all the procs, right? Can't use a Mark of Torment here because of the stones that are flying from the skies, but might not even be needed, right? Yeah, once he has the damage reduction on us, we are not doing the best damage, but it's still fine. And there we go, another ring, nice, nice. And last but not least, let's also check out a local kill here. So, we got enough freeze rest as you can't see. And the last time I fought this guy with potions, right? So this time let's try to fight him without potions. But also the last time he kinda walked out of my runes, right? So hopefully this time he doesn't do that. Alright, so look over without pots, here we go. Is he moving again? Please stop. See, that's so crazy strong, like you don't even need a Lohman, right? Moving again, come on, dude. Stop it. I mean, you don't even need a Mark of Torment, rather. Um, but yeah, he's a clap, right? Wait, what? Triple Legendary from this guy? Okay, nice. Well, yeah, this is gonna be it for this highlight video. And yeah, if anybody still has doubts about Apostate being an actual viable and good class, or also Rune of Hagarad, there it is. Well, I guess the character would like to show you this. So yeah, thank you so much everybody for watching this little highlight video of my Vitality Rune of Hagarad Starfish Apostate. And if you would like to see more content about this character, check out the other videos down below. Also, I want to thank you everybody on YouTube here as well as on Twitch for making me able to reach 2000 subscribers here on YouTube. That is awesome and another big stepping stone for me. Also, I want to quickly mention that you can now also officially support me on Patreon. You can become the first patron today if you would like to. This can be a nice additional way for you guys to support me, to support me doing more content. Because compared to other websites such as YouTube and Twitch, Patreon usually takes a smaller share. So if you want as much of your money to get to myself directly and not to Twitch slash Amazon, then you can also become my Patreon now. You can even support me with as little as one euro per month. It adds up every amount, as small as it might be, will help me create more awesome content for you guys and also help me improve my streaming setup as well as the time that I can invest into making videos for you guys. So yeah, thank you very much for considering doing that. I hope you're gonna enjoy my future content as well and I hope to see you around on the next one.